Hey everybody and welcome to issue 75 of the Imperium magazine for this Warhammer Wednesday. As you can see, the League of Voltans have arrived. Is it, I guess, Voltan. Sorry, there's no S. Inside, we do a bit more of the Hematrope reactor, the Leagues of Voltan, and two paint schemes. I'm painting mine exactly like the original one that I did because I want them to match. But we'll take a quick look at the schemes inside. So this time we get a factions page all about the Leagues of Votan. We get Chaos Demons of Nurgle, Warzone Daravar, we'll go with, and an obstacle of acquisition. We then build, paint, and get a battle. So the Leagues of Votan were GW's attempt to bring back the squats. They've obviously just been hiding within the galaxy and somehow for the last... I don't know, half a millennium, they kind of lost track of where they were. Talks a bit about their technology, how they use AI, and how the Imperium rightly fears them. Their armies are stronger than the Imperium. They have technology from the Dark Ages. They use machinery that the Adeptus Mechanicus have banned. They are a threat to mankind, but they are also a strong ally, so they don't want to piss them off too much. And they've got this weird uh, diplomatic trade going on at the moment where it's kind of a case of you stay out my way, I stay out of yours. Now and again they will clash, but for now they seem to be, I wouldn't say working well together, but they are working together. We then learn about the Demons of Nurgle, very similar to how the Corn one was last week. We get a bit about the plague bearers, the Nurglings, the heralds of Nurgle, and uh, I always forget his name, Sloppy, <laughs> the uh, the named herald, and then we get the great unclean ones with Rot Gut as their named one. I love Nurgle, they're so comical with the old grandfather effect that they have going on. The artwork is gorgeous as well, I really wish they'd give us better imagery than these little tiny squares, or at least show us the models. We then learn about the Daravar system, which is home to a traitorous knight household known as the Mandracor, and they pose a threat to Imperial shipping, and these guys have hidden out since the Horus Heresy. I'm not entirely sure how they've managed to do that, but they have. But finally, the Space Marines have come to reclaim the world. But they're not going to get it easily. So the Rift Wardens were sent as the Space Marine forces to take the world. And obviously they have to fight the Knight's household. But that's not all. Abaddon, or Abaddon, fearing that he was going to lose the world and the strategic importance of it, sent Harkon the World Claimer, the Herald of the Apocalypse, with a force of Black Legionnaires to help defend the world. We then get a little... Uh, a little Voltan versus a uh, Black Legion army army story report set in the Gaurak system. This is not a great picture of a Terminator. It, it looks really bad. I don't know what the artist was thinking there. I don't get the look of the armor at all. It looks very strange. But as you can see, it's a decent sized story and we actually get to see some miniatures for once. Do like these vehicles. I'm thinking of getting a couple for Judge Dread. I think if I paint them up and you can't see the dwarf crew and I can get rid of the guns, of course, they'll look cool as like little little camper vans and hover wagons and stuff. Get a couple of cool pictures and then a nice little finishing game report almost imagery. Looks like it's from a battle report. Then we learn how to build the Hematrope Reactor, which we've done before in a previous uh, previous magazine. We also then learn how to paint. This is the Rust and Grime scheme. So they cover everything in black, then they use Lead Belcher, Rune Lord Brass, Stormhost Silver to highlight, Morphang Brown, Baylor Brown, the Cryptek Armor Shade Gloss, some more Morphang Brown and then Troll Slayer Orange and you'll end up with something that looks like this. Mine didn't end up like that. If you want to watch that video, I'll put it here. Hopefully I did that right and it's going to pop up for you. If it doesn't, I'm sorry, I'm just not that clever. 
We then learn a sandy scheme, which looks cool enough. It's just like browns and oranges instead of a black base coat. A lot less silver on it. And as you can see, they work their way through all the different colors, whites, blacks, grays, none oil, silver host, evil sun, scarlet. You end up with something like that. Mine is that. That's the one I went with. So there you go. Then we finish off the magazine with a 9th edition battle report, which in a nice turn of events, even though we don't have the battle mats for it, it's set as a boarding action. So the Necrons have boarded an Imperial ship and they are attempting to take it over whilst the Imperium are trying to rebel, rebel, repel the borders. There's too many B's and P's in my life. As you can see, 75 point power mission and it's pretty much a weird kind of take and hold got this weird shape set up and basically your necrons are player a your imperium is player b the necrons have to try and sabotage these and if they get three or more different objective markers they are immediately victorious otherwise player b is victorious you do not take any secondary missions. So it is a smash and grab. The Necrons just have to smash and grab. They're very easily going to get this. I don't see how the Imperium can stop that. It's too far away for them to get to. Because ultimately at the end of each movement phase, so one or more unit can start to perform this action at the end of their movement phase, the unit must be within range of the action marker shown on the battle mat. The unit cannot start this action when there's enemies are in range of the action marker. The action is completed at the end of player A's next command phase. So ultimately, turn one, Necrons take that. I don't see how the Imperium can get close enough to stop them. So I just see that falling very quickly. Then the Imperium's got a come down here, come down here, and definitely come down here hard. Because that's quite far away. Like, 12, 12. Whereas that is 18 and 18. So a smart Necron player would just go that way and sabotage him. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I'm not even going to play it because it's 9th edition. And I have actually stopped playing 40k at the moment. I'm just collecting and painting my way through my backlog. So don't expect me to play that one anytime soon. And then for issue 76, we got the little Space Marine buggy. Here's mine. I've already got it built, waiting to be primed. Then after that, we got a double header. It's the Necron Command Badge. So there you go quick and dirty video once again i'll drop a link in the bottom to take you to the painting video for the hematrope reactor i'm just not going to redo the entire painting video as it's already been done once but there you go hope you enjoyed remember to drop a like subscribe all that good stuff and i will see you very soon Bye bye